sometimes sequences require the previous members of the sequence to figure out the next member. So for example, suppose I tell you that another sequence has its first term 1, and then to get its nth term, you take 2 times the previous term, and you add 1. What does that sequence look like? Well, this is a little peculiar. We have to be a little bit careful here. So let's try to list those terms down in order. So what would a1 be? Now remember the sequence, I just write as a1, then a2, then a3, then a4. I just write them out in order where the denominator, not denominator, but this little subscript tells me sort of which term in the sequence I am. So a1 is 1. We were told that. Now how do I find a2? Well, see, a2 would equal 2 times a, and what subscript is this? 2 minus 1 is 1. So it's just the previous number, 2 times the previous number plus 1. So 2 times the previous number would be 2 plus 1 would be 3. So in fact, what I'd see here is that a2 would equal 2 times a1 plus 1. And where'd that 1 come from? That's just 2 minus 1. Wherever I see a 2, I replace the n by 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Ah, so I need the first term, which is 1. So 2 times 1 plus 1. What would the next term be? Well, a3, if I let n be 3, I would see 2 times a3 minus 1, which is 2 plus 1. So I need the previous term, which is 3. Multiply it by 2, I get 6 plus 1 is 7. So you see, I'm actually able to generate the sequence, but I always have to know what the previous member was. What would this be? Well, this would be 2 times the previous thing, so that would be 14 plus 1 is 15. What would this be? This would be 2 times the previous thing, which would be then 30 plus 1 is 31. Let me show you a very famous such sequence. Let's let a equal 1, a1 equal 1, and I'm even going to tell you what the second one is. It equals 1 as well. But to get all the rest, what you just do is add the two previous people. So let's make a list of the terms. I have 1, 1, and what's the next one? Well, for the next one, I just add the two previous people. So I add 1 and 1, and I get 2. To get the fourth term, what do I do? I add the two previous people. So I add 1 and 2 and get 3. The next term, I'd see 5. The next term, I'd see 8. The next term, I'd see 13. And this goes on. This sequence has a name. This is called the Fibonacci sequence. And in fact, it's a really, really cool sequence because in fact, if you ever take a look at the spirals on a pine cone or on a flower or on a pineapple or anywhere, if you count the spirals, and there's two sets of them, there's some that are sort of going this way, and there's some that's going this way, if you count them, you'll always see two adjacent numbers. Like for a, um, for a pineapple, if you count a pineapple, you'll see eight and five. Eight spirals going in one direction and 13 spirals going in the other direction. I'm sorry, eight and 13, eight and 13. If you look at a pine cone, a pine, app, a pine cone, you'll see like five and eight and stuff. So it's really cool. In fact, sometimes these sequences actually capture some essence of nature and are reflective back into our real world. So these things are really sort of fun and important. But the important thing right now is to realize this is just a, not a very big deal. It's just a little notation that may look scary, but it just allows us to find the nth term of a sequence. Up next, we'll take a look at some very special sequences and some properties about them. I'll see you there.